On today's episode, we take a ride on the Razor Crest with Baby Yoda, Mando, Ludwig, and more as we look at the vinyl box set from Mondo of The Mandalorian. Welcome to the Vinyl Score. Jorgensen is a Swedish composer that has worked in film and television for the last several years. He created the score for Tenet, Venom, Black Panther, and the Creed series, working closely with director and longtime friend Ryan Coogler. His television credits include Community and The New Girl. He's even worked in pop and hip-hop music with artists like Childish Gambino and Chance the Rapper. But he is also the composer for the first Star Wars television show on Disney+, Plus, The Mandalorian. When you watch behind-the-scenes footage or interviews, there's something easygoing about Ludwig. He seems very approachable and personable. He reminds me a lot of some of the kids I knew in the metal scene in Salem, Oregon, when they were younger. But now they've grown up a little bit more and they're in new phases or paths for music. So how do you follow a composer like John Williams with nine movies filled with iconic Star Wars music? Short answer, you don't. You don't plan on imitating him. The plan was to take some inspiration from Westerns, Kurosawa films, electronic music elements, and traditional symphonic elements, and combine them to create the voice and sound of The Mandalorian. In a behind-the-scenes feature called Star Wars Galleries on Disney+, Plus, he talks about adding his music to a world so firmly owned by John Williams, and how he would certainly fail if he was asked to replicate that. He was encouraged by John Favreau and Dave Filoni to find his own voice, allowing him room to create his own sound. I can't imagine the thought of having to follow somebody like John Williams, and it must bring some sense of relief to know you're not being asked to try and replicate that style. The topic of The Mandalorian came up recently on a collaborative video I was making with my friends Mark from Popcorn and Vinyl and Paolo from Gigawatts. We talked about breaking away from the shadow of a master like John Williams. Uh, Mandalorian, so I'm, I'm going to say something that's going to kill all of my credibility for, for a moment, and, and, and I'm an idiot for, for thinking this. So I didn't buy Mandalorian originally because I didn't like it when it first came out. And for me, sometimes things have to percolate a little bit before I get used to something different. So growing up with John Williams, there was a certain expectation that I had for a Star Wars score. So when I got something different, I'm like, ah, this is crap. Um, well, not, not even that. I just remember being very indifferent towards it. And even the show took me like a while to get into. Uh, and like, I didn't finish season one until two weeks before season two started. Season two is insane. It's incredible. The best Star Wars we've had since the 80s. But um, with that score, like, I just, I didn't get it at first. But then after a couple of listens, I'm like, this... This is amazing. <laughs> this is groundbreaking stuff. And uh... But what does this box set sound like? How does the music hold up outside of the show? Paolo was the only one of the three of us so far to have his hands on a box set. So he has a little sneak peek for you. Quick, uh, we talked about the Ma Mandalorian release. Uh, it's one that I just listened to it today and it sounded amazing. The sound quality is really great. It's, it's loud, it's clean, it's so enjoyable. And there is a ton of music on this. My hat's off to TV composers and the sheer amount of music they have to write. Ludwig stated it's the equivalent of writing three albums worth of material. With 70 songs on this, and most in the three to seven minute range, there's well over two hours of music here. And that's a lot to take in. Mondo has managed to get the entire season one soundtrack into one box set, spanning eight LPs all on black vinyl. They say this is a one-time pressing of 3500 and it is sold out. You might be able to find a copy on some of the Disney Store websites. I don't have a lot of experience in that, so I can't guarantee that. There is a single disc version that is a picture disc that's a Walmart exclusive. But I can't bring myself to try that one, and I have an aversion to Walmart exclusives. The idea of some of these mega chains getting involved in exclusive vinyl pressings is a serious concern to me. I'd much rather be supporting individual labels and, most importantly, individual record stores. Picture discs are kind of the Walmart of the vinyl world anyway. Tacky, unnecessary, and they sound awful. It could just be I'm getting old. I mean, this is a Disney product after all, but what do I know? The Mandalorian is the first live-action television series for Star Wars. It has Baby Yoda. I really like it. It's by far my favorite of the new Star Wars stuff that's out there. If you don't know it, then you probably aren't much of a Star Wars fan. So be it. Which is no big deal, because otherwise it seems like it's advertised everywhere. 
It also feels pretty right for Star Wars to me. Gritty, dirty, a nice sense of adventure without taking itself too seriously. I'm sure some folks don't like it, but it works for me. The records. Okay, look at this son of a bitch. The box set is a kind of Beskar gray. Here's a knit Baby Yoda for scale. It feels sturdy and solid. The box comes with a wraparound OBI strip and is emblazoned with the Mudhorn signet. The box has a heavy outer shell that reveals the storage case inside, very uniform on the spine design. They look pretty sharp in their slipcase too, but looky here, half of them got busted out of their sleeves. This happens sometimes in shipping. I let it go a lot, but on a $200 set, I had to ask if I could order replacements. Mondo was super cool and is sending me replacement covers for free. Thank you, Mondo. Pull them out and you reveal the eight record set. One record for each chapter episode. Each individual cover features artwork by Paul Mann. There is a two-sided insert, pretty sparse on the extras overall. Paul Mann does fantastic vintage movie poster style art. Check out his website to see more of his great work. I would have loved to have seen the original concept art used at the end credits incorporated somehow, but they were all done by all sorts of talented folks. I bet getting one artist for all the covers vastly simplified the process. The back covers are all uniform and very straight ahead. They list the musicians for each chapter, which I love. Lots of people go into the creation of these recordings, and it's great to see them credited. The records are all 180 gram weight on black vinyl, with a basic label design. I like the archival feel of this set. Each record comes in a poly-lined black sleeve. The music. There's a lot of music here. Like, a lot. 70 songs. Two hours plus worth of music. Ludwig working his magic on those recorders. This really establishes a lot of the tone for his score. One of the first electronic and symphonic cues. Lots of energy and urgency. What a great rhythm here. In this horn part, how can you not get excited? This is one of the cues that makes my ears think of westerns, like Ennio Morricone. When the chimes end, pick up your gun. Try and shoot me, Colonel. Listen to the score from this iconic moment from Just For a Few Dollars More. Sounds familiar to me.
A lot of my favorite tracks from this season feel big and grand like this. A gentler start here with a 60s folk feel that soon leads the way to danger. I like the way this builds, and the ending bass line gives me some vibes like The Thing. Ludwig loves these triplets and funky trap rhythms, and so do I. A huge moment from the show, and I love the gentle melody hiding in this. Back to my triplets and trap drums, woven with traditional symphonic elements. Such a beautiful cue and a lovely ending to the eight record set. The Wrap. For starters, if you really like the score to The Mandalorian, this is a great set. It's nicely done. It's not extravagant in some of the more unnecessary ways. No color vinyl, no gatefold sleeves. The box is easy to work with and handle without feeling like, you know, you need gloves. I like the artwork a lot with that vintage movie poster style. It also reminds me of some of the old Star Wars Marvel comic books. I would have loved to have seen that 
concept art that was used in the end credits of the show incorporated into this somehow, a booklet or, or another insert maybe. All in all though, pretty rock solid set. For the semi-casual fan, this is too much. I think a condensed highlights record would work for a lot of people, make it a two or three LP set that covers all eight episodes. I wonder if something like that will turn up somewhere down the line. Maybe they say the full box set is a one-time print only, but we're going to release this Greatest Hits collection as well. So for now, this is out of print. I mean, it looks like you can grab it online for about three to $400. I think 3,500 is a pretty high number. So I think with a little patience, that number will probably come down. Also, big props to Mondo for restricting this pre-order to one per person. I know they get a lot of heat for people who buy them just to flip them or sell them on the secondary market. So this was a nice step to make sure that as many got into the hands of fans as possible. They certainly don't control the entire world and what they do and buy, but this was a nice feature to try and combat that. All in all, this was also a pretty cost-effective set. You get eight LPs for $200 and you can slice that a couple of ways. You could say that that's about $20 a piece, plus $40 for the box set itself, or you can say it was about $25 a piece, including the box set. That's really a pretty good deal for eight LPs. For putting together an archive style box set like this, they really did a great job. Musically, I love the symphonic Western Samurai electronic mashup. I think I'm about as targeted as a key demographic as I can be, too. I love Star Wars, and these are all genres I enjoy. I think this set's a winner for fans of The Mandalorian and for fans of Ludwig Jorensen's. If this feels a little overwhelming for you, well, maybe pump the brakes and see what happens in the near future. It could be that we see some sort of compilation release in the future. If not, keep your eye on eBay or Discogs and see if you can snag one. Because if Mondo sticks to their guns that this is a one-time pressing, I think it will be well worth it. But remember, there's always Walmart. Thanks for watching the Vinyl Score. If you want to support the channel, you can head to our website and donate. $20 or more gets you the sweet grab bag with a Vinyl Score slip mat, stickers, buttons, and magnet. If you liked what you saw, you can like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.